Hi, I'm Nancy Sturdivant, an entomologist with the Forest Service Forest Health Protection Team in Missoula, Montana. Today I'm here to demonstrate several different monitoring methods for knapweed. There are three reasons why we monitor biological control agents. The first is to see if the insects become established. The second is to know if the insect has spread from the initial point of release. And the third is to determine the effect of the insect on the weed population. Let's begin by discussing one of the root feeding insects, Agapita zogana. The common name is the sulfur knapweed moth or the yellow winged knapweed root moth. The life cycle and or biology of this insect is that it has one generation per year. The eggs are laid on the surface of stems and leaves of the knapweed, generally along the crevices. The eggs hatch in about seven to ten days. Then the larvae migrate immediately to the root crown area where they mine the root. After consuming the initial root, larvae can move to an adjoining root. They spend the winter in the larval stage. Pupation occurs within the damaged roots. Adults emerge from mid-June to mid-August. Adults can live up to 11 days. Eggs are then laid and mating occurs soon afterward. There are four monitoring methods for Agapita, three adult sampling methods and one larval method. I'll begin by describing the most effective method to the least effective method and talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each method. Pheromone traps, like the one I'm holding, is the most effective way to monitor for Agapita. We recovered adults at 89% of the 125 sites that we sampled. This method takes approximately 40 minutes, 30 minutes to set the traps in the field, and 10 minutes to collect the traps at a later date. There are advantages to this method. Very little training is required, and you have a long or wide sampling window. The disadvantage is minimal. At a, there's a cost of approximately $12 per site for the traps and the baits. The traps should be placed in the field prior to the peak moth flight, which is usually around July 1st, and they can be left in the field for several months. The pheromone remains attractive to the moths for approximately six weeks after placement. You need to place five traps at each site, which are approximately 20 meters apart from each other and 20 meters away from where the insects were initially released. And the trap should represent the spatial characteristics of the napweed infestation. In other words, if the knapweed infestation is linear, you'll want the traps lined up along a transect. Both the traps and baits are available commercially. Let's take a closer look at one of these traps. This trap was set at Mormon Peak on the Lolo National Forest. We caught many agapita in this trap. But now I'd like to show you how to put them together from the start. This is a delta trap. What you need to do is open it up. It has a sticky substance on two sides. Make sure you also spread the sticky substance on the third side. It's a triangular shape. The pheromone is embedded in this rubber septum. You need to put the pheromone on an insect pin or any kind of pin and place it on one of the sides of the trap or in one of the sides of the trap, like such, so that the septum doesn't touch the sticky substance. And then close the pheromone trap securely with a staple, and then adhere it or place it firmly to a wooden or metal stake in the field. The visual transect method is the second most effective method for monitoring agapita. We recovered adults at 55% of the sites we sampled. This method only takes approximately 30 minutes per site to complete. 
The advantage of this method is that there is little uh, equipment cost and time associated with it. The disadvantage is that sampling must be done during the warm part of the day when there's very little to no cloud cover and should be done uh, at peak moth flight, which usually occurs around July 15th. To sample using the adult visual method, you should slowly walk each of six 50 meter transects and observe the number of agapita seen resting on or near the plants. Record moths that are within a three foot swath on either side of the transect. Larval sampling is the third most effective monitoring tool for agapita. We recovered adults at 43% of the sites we sampled. This sampling method takes approximately two and a half hours to do. The advantage of this method is the long sampling window from approximately the time the ground thaws until the beginning of moth flight, which usually occurs around June 1st. The disadvantage of this method is that it does take a lot of time and there is some expertise needed for identifying larvae in the roots. To sample using the larval method, you'll need to excavate plants along transects in four directions radiating out from the point the insects were released. A napweed plant with a minimum of 10 millimeter diameter at the root collar is removed approximately every meter along each transect to a distance of 12 meters for a total of 52 roots per site. Roots can be dissected in the field or brought into the lab and put in cold storage for up to eight weeks, and then you can dissect them at a later date. To distinguish between Agapita and Cyphocleonis larvae in the roots, you need to look for the following differences. Agapita, again, is a moth, and the larvae are not C-shaped like the grub-shaped larvae of Cyphocleonis. Agapita larvae also have prolegs, like all Lepidoptera larvae do. Cyphocleonis larvae do not have prolegs. Sweep netting is the least effective method for monitoring agapita. We only recovered adults at 38% of the sites we sampled. This method takes approximately 10 minutes to complete, which is a real advantage. Also, there is little equipment needed, only a sweep net. The disadvantage is that sampling must be done on warm, calm days with low to no cloud cover during the middle of the day and during peak moth flight, which again usually occurs around July 15th. To sample with the sweep net, you need to establish six transects that you will walk. You take 20 sweeps with the net along each of the transects and then examine the content of the nets for the moth after you complete each transect. We've covered several different monitoring methods for Agapita. They vary in the amount of time required and how effective they are. For Agapita, pheromone trapping is the best method. The second root feeding biological control agent of knapweed is Cyphocleonis acades, or more commonly known as the knapweed root weevil. The weevil has one generation per year. The eggs are laid on the root crown and they hatch in about 10 to 12 days. The larvae then mine down toward the cortex of the root immediately after hatching. They spend the winter in the larval stage. Pupation occurs within the galled root. Adults emerge from early August to mid-September and begin to feed on leaves and live 8 to 15 weeks but do not overwinter. There are three monitoring methods for Cyphocleonis currently available, larval, adult visual, and adult sweep netting. Larval sampling is the most effective monitoring method for the weevil. We recovered larvae at 36% of the sites we sampled using this method. This method is done in the same way as was described for Agapita. Sweep netting 
is the second most efficient way for monitoring cyphocleonis. We recovered adults at 18% of the sites we sampled using sweep netting. This method is also done the same way as we described for Agapita. Visual transects are the least effective method for monitoring cyphocleonis. We recovered adults at only 6% of the sites we sampled. Larval sampling is the recommended method for monitoring cyphocleonis. I'm Sandy Kegley. I'm a forest entomologist with Forest Health Protection in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And I'm going to describe monitoring methods for three seed head feeding insects of knapweed. There's two seed head feeding flies and a moth, and I'm going to start with the flies. The two flies are Urophora affinis and Urophora quadrifasciata. The larvae of these flies cause the formation of galls in the seed heads of knapweed. They both have one or two generations a year, and the adult flies are really small. They're less than 3 16th of an inch in length and can be distinguished from each other by the banding on their wings. Urophora quadrifasciata has bolder, more complete wing banding than Urophora affinis. Both of these flies overwinter as larvae within the seed head and begin pupation around the 1st of May. The adults start to emerge at the end of May or beginning of June, and peak adult emergence usually occurs in the beginning of July. Eggs are laid within the small developing flower buds. The galls of Urophora affinis are hard and distinct, where the galls of Urophora quadrifasciata are less apparent and papery in texture and appearance. Both flies can be found within the same seed head. Seed head dissection is the most efficient method for monitoring the seed head feeding flies. The advantages of this is there's no equipment needed, very little time, and it can be done over a long period of time since the larvae are found within the seed heads from fall to the spring. Uh, you need to collect about 100 seed heads per release site, randomly select plants surrounding the release point, and choose no more than 10 seeds per plant. You collect the seeds from the upper part of the knapweed plant. As you collect the seed heads from the knapweed, you can dissect them right there in the field. Just open them up and look for either the larvae or the hard galls that the larvae form. The larvae look like maggots. They have no legs and no distinct head. And the galls are very hard and um, brown in color. And you'll notice them, they're different from the seeds. Once you've recovered 25 fly larvae in the seed head, you can stop sampling because that's enough to demonstrate that the flies are established at the site. Sweep netting is also an efficient method to monitor the seed head fly adults. This method takes about 10 minutes to complete, and the advantages is that there is minimal cost and equipment needed per site, and it takes little time to sample. The best time to sample the adults is mid-July for both of the flies, and again during late August to cover their second flight period. You should sample during the warm part of the day and on days when it is not raining. Sweep netting is done in the same fashion as what was described for Agapita. Another method would be to rear the adults out of seed heads. Seed heads can be collected in the spring before the adult flies emerge, brought indoors in a warm place, placed in petri dishes or a brown paper bag, and left for the adult flies to emerge. It may take up to eight weeks for all the flies to emerge, depending on when the seed heads are collected. You can just leave them there and then come back after the adults have emerged and are dead and then count them. Now I'm going to talk about monitoring methods for the seed feeding moth, Metsneria possipunctella. The larvae of this moth feed within the seed of knapweed and it spends the winter in the larval stage in the seed head. Adult moths emerge in June and early July. Females lay eggs at the base of mature flower buds. The eggs hatch and larvae enter an individual bud, and young larvae feed on the florets, and older larvae feed on the developing seeds. <laughs> 
Seed dissection is the most efficient method for monitoring for the seed feeding moth. It is very similar to what I described for the seed feeding flies. The only difference is that you need to collect a few more seed heads because it is not as common and is not well established like the flies are. You should collect at least 200 seed heads per site. All the other methods are the same. Uh, this moth is well established in northern Idaho and in certain places in western Montana, but is not known to be established east of the Continental Divide. The larvae of the moth are bigger than the flies. They have pro legs and a distinct head capsule so they can be uh, differentiated from any fly larvae. Sometimes you'll find larvae of both the moth and the flies in the same seed head. A rearing is another method you can use to monitor for the seed head feeding moth. A rearing is done in the same manner as described for the flies. For the seed head feeding insects, both the flies and the moth, we recommend dissection or rearing. They both take very little time and very little skill is needed. Monitoring is critical to a successful biological control program. Also, keeping records over the long term of your monitoring efforts is very important to number one, determine whether or not the insect is established, and two, to evaluate the effects of the insect on the weed population.